Jagmonds. Hello internet, welcome to Jagmonds. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. I always go on about all oh, how reliable Jags are and, and you know I just use them as a daily driver. Well, that's my daily driver, and last night I drove it here, and this morning it wouldn't start. So, looks like I'll be doing a little bit of diagnostic work, and uh, yeah, well, let's kind of get it in the garage. Uh, figure out what the hell is going on. Oh, looks like oh. tow hooks. Very handy. All right, so you got a jag that won't start. So, where did you plug this in? That's my scan tool. Well, my friend, this is way before scan tools. You gotta do it old school. Nine times out of 10, the issues with jags are spark. And so the quick and dirty to test whether or not you have spark is with one of these. Stick it in there on that one. And you kind of stick it in there on this one and if you have spark it'll show up right there that's good so we can kind of see it all right let's see if we got some spark that would be a no on the spark all right so negative goes on the battery terminal negative and the ignition switch we should have 12 volts there we go so that tests out fine okay now we're going to test the negative which is this one right here on the coil so you put the positive on the negative terminal and to the battery and we should have Bolts. 12 volts. Okay, so that checks out. Next step, let's take our air cleaner off. I uh, need a screwing device. Maestro, cue the music. This is your ignition module, or ignition amplifier right here. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that. And this is your gulp valve that keeps your engine from running on. I'm gonna that out. And now we have a Lucas ignition module, and you can spend pretty close to 200 bucks for this, but we're going to do a hack on it. There'll be about 50 bucks. All right, I'm going to get this cleaned up. All right, here's the ignition module. Let's let's get down to brass tacks here. All right. So how I ran across this is because I the other XJ6 the ignition module was bad in it and I priced these things out and they were close to 200 bucks and I noticed that there were screws in it and 
If there's screws, then hey, then it needs to be taken apart. Seeing that these wires are all broken. Well, there's your problem. These wires are rather important. The white wire attaches to the positive side of the coil and provides power to the entire ignition circuit, whereas the other white wire with the black stripe attaches to the negative side of the coil and essentially triggers the coil secondary windings to release its pent up, this is porn. It's not porn. Megawatts out through the top. This is porn. It's not porn, just read it. Coil to the distributor cap and ultimately reaching the spark plug. <laughs> this is fucking porn. It's not hard. I think, and it's broken there. I think I'm just going to redo this. And unfortunately, I'm not going to have this nifty little plug. But I might be able to pull these wires back. Yeah, just like that. And cut them. And run new wire. So it's so this will be the only place where it's kind of funky. Funky. I typically don't like doing that and I haven't found a source for the proper color wires because as soon as I do believe me I'll buy all of them so I'm just come out. all right there we go all right let's see what we got here ho 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 that looks like a GM ignition module. Hmm, do not open. Too late. Alright, so let's see. Is that it? By George it is. Look, it even says GM on it. Why the bastards? Quarter inch. Okay, now I don't want to really disturb these wires too much because they're old and brittle and I don't want to break them. So I'm going to take this out too, maybe. that and so this should all come out in nice one big piece this should all come out in one big piece oh lucky there and it does so all right so the capacitor goes on the B so I'm slide that off Hot damn. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this and put some new wire on here and I won't bore you with that. While we're going down rabbit holes, let's talk about fire because it's very real with Jags. Um, fuel rail, fuel pressure regulator, rubber hose, return to the fuel tank, fuel injector, rubber hose, source of spark near rubber hose when you know these things get brittle and it doesn't hurt just to give them a squeeze every now and again and these are actually in pretty good shape so I'm not too worried about but while I'm here let's talk about connections alright this is the ignition switch this is the positive to the amplifier the green one is the negative, which should actually be white with the black stripe. And <clears throat> this one is to the tack. And that one is to, it's a signal wire to the fuel injection control module, which is in the boot. So that's kind of how it's wired together. Um, just be mindful. I mean, if you've got brittle wires, chances are your hoses need to be replaced too. Um, fire is very real because what happens is it just kind of pools up down in the exhaust manifold or on the intake manifold and 
you know, hot day, it's not the gas that ignites, it's the fumes. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I just cut the wire off. I had some of this wire loom. I was hoping I could pull it through the other one, but that's not going to happen. And then, um, I, as much as this goes against every bone in my body, I didn't have the right color wire, but I just did red and black. The black stripe is obviously the ground and, or not ground, but the, the green and the other one is not green, red. I'm tired. It's late. All right, so here it is. Ta-da! All right, so this is it. This is actually like a heat sink, and so I'm going to put some schmoo on here, a little super thermal grease. It's super, so it'll do super stuff. Where do they come up with the stupid names? All right, so <clears throat> there's that. Let's unscrew this. Whoops, shit. Well, that's gone forever. I'm just kind of... should be plenty. Alright, let's kind of wipe this out so it's clean. We got good contact. 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 Yeah. Now we're going to check the condenser to make sure that it's not cooked. And I'll show you how to check a condenser. And this is just the same condenser that uh, used for a point system because it doesn't have a part number so I just use <clears throat> just a regular it's a regular condenser and then just cut the end off and solder on a solder a crimp probably I like this little thing so let's test it see if it's done for nothing else it's dirty you can't have dirty shit in here it's well it kind of looks like it might be um, done for now that I look at it see how it's kind of bulged out there and that one's not so all right just kind of move that out of the way move this out of the way and your ohm meter. So you want to set it on your maximum ohms and then put the positive in there and the negative and it should go up to like 18 ohms and then fall off. It's a little slow, slower than the other one, that's for sure. So then you just kind of wait for it to get all the way up there. So now it's fully charged. And so this one, this brand new one, up really fast. Oh, it's still got a charge on it. So that one goes up to 19. This one just kind of took its sweet ass time.
So essentially what this does is <clears throat> when the contacts open and breaks the circuit, it um, everything has inertia and so you've got these running <clears throat> little pixies running through the wire and as soon as you open the contact, you know, they've got inertia and they gotta go someplace and so that's where they go. They go into this and then as soon as the connection is reestablished, then these then all of the juice that's in here gets pushed through the system. So that's how it works. Alright, so here we go. Let's run them through, stick it in. Sounds a bit rude. Okay, so there's that and that. I'm just going to put our fingers on them to hold them in place. Kind of get, I'm just being very careful because I don't, these wires are really brittle and I don't want to break the insulation. Alright, so this goes on like this. Let the schmoo do its stuff. All right, so we have a flat washer and a spring washer. Stick those on. I don't have any of those little those lock washers this small. I bought a whole bunch of them from MasterCard because I just don't like um, spring washers. I don't think they do a very good job. Okay, just kind of try to center it so it, I'll be able to get that plug on. Alright, so here's another one. Stick it on. I did drop it. Okay, stick that on. And this. Tighten it up a little bit. Now you just, you don't want to over tight it. I'm just getting it snug. <clears throat> yeah, so now that you got the schmoo sticking out, so this is essentially will then become a big giant heat sink for that. Of course it bolts onto the side of the engine which gets hot. I don't know. Not the smart, not the way I would do it, you know, but hey, <clears throat> I've got a bunch of really smart boffins that do this or I don't know, maybe they spent too much time at the pub or let's just do it cheaply I don't know so I'm gonna replace this and I'm gonna cut that end off and crimp on a new one I gotta go find some ends now now <clears throat> stick that in I did I cut the fucking wires alright well I've got to trim some more of this off anyway. Hope I don't do it again. So, about that much. Give it a little twirl, cut the insulation. And give it a yank. Oh, that looks much better. I got some wire. Give it a little twist. I'm left handed, so you know, when I ever I twist things, it's always. It's always backwards. And I'm going to put a little nubbin on the end of this because it is a little big. And stick that in like that. And give it a squeeze. Stick that in like that. Give it a squeeze. There we go. Oh, that's in. And stick that on like okay, that's on. <clears throat> I'll get that in place just right there. Switch sockets because that one's too big. And I'll stick that on like that. <clears throat> Woohoo, I found it.
Yay! So this shit won't dry out now. This is just anti seize lube. Mmm, yummy. Mmm. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way, and if you get it on your clothes, your wife will hate you because it doesn't come out. Well, it does, but. Um, no, it really doesn't. Well, it does come out, but it's not not easily. All right, can I get that one started? Oh, that feels so much better. Stand that one goes in there like that. Hmm. I think that. Uh, clip is, it'll be fine. No, it won't. So, bend those down so they're not touching, because <clears throat> this does get hot, and, you know, it may melt, and then again it may not, but it would suck if I was out <clears throat> someplace in the middle of the woods with no cell service and have the ignition go out out in the woods like I never had that happen yeah happened to me with the 74 of course I was stupid for even attempting to take it I was probably about I don't know uh, probably about 30 40 miles out in the middle of nowhere two-lane road thing craps out on me and um, it burned through points like it's going out of style and so I always kept a set of points well the points wasn't what the problem was is the shaft on the distributor was just kind of flopping around so you get up to about 2500 rpm it start missing and then it quit because it cooked the points and anyway it was all bad all bad. There. All right. Let's stick it in. This is the end of the intake plenum, and this is where the module bolts on. Okay, this is a lead for the distributor. <clears throat> it's a whole lot easier to plug in while it's kind of loose and it's keyed. So it'll only go in one way, fortunately. Except I'm trying to stick it someplace where it doesn't go. But the clip is on the bottom side, in case yours is broken like on the other XJ. So then we just kind of hold it up. All right, just as I had promised. Okay, the white wire goes on the positive side of the coil and is illustrated by the red wire and the black and white wire goes on the negative side of the coil. So, let's tighten this up. I like to get them both snug before I tighten them. And you're screwing into a the intake manifold it is aluminum so don't go a 200 pound gorilla on it because you'll strip it out and then you're fucked all right so we've got PCB breather goes there so put that on this into place. And slide the snorkel. Yeah, you like that? Well, I didn't have the foam and I didn't want to get all beat up, so I improvised. Alright, there we are. 
So, let's see if this works. Let's take it out for a drive. Trying to get the wipers where they're supposed to be. I bought this, it was not it didn't run. And as you can see, you know, when I got it it had fifty thousand miles on it. So I put thirty-two on it in the six years I've owned it. And it, it's just I thought, well, you know, I'll monkey with it and see see what it takes to get it going and this car is what got me on the on the JAG forums and uh, you, you'll find me at M. Lee at JAG Lovers and uh, those guys are great you know they helped me out I didn't have a clue as to what I was doing I didn't know where to get parts I didn't know where to get a manual and, I mean I've got all of that stuff nailed down and I spent 50 bucks on a coil because, well, actually, the original coil was, was a, just what I had kicking around. And so I put a coil in it, fired right up. And it's just, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful car. Uh, when I bought it, the, <laughs> the driver's side window wouldn't go up and down, and I couldn't figure out why either. Well, I took the door panel off, and lo and behold, I found a stick stuck in there to hold the window up so yeah last time I checked that that was well my guess they probably deleted it from the factory and so I got the window regulator and um, the motor and all the bits to make it work from um, everyday XJ great great website Dave is just a wonderful guy to deal with and I can't say anything but nice things about him, and you know he has helped me out more times than I care to admit about you know getting parts that you know I, I couldn't otherwise get or were prohibitively expensive like carriers and um, well here's an example uh, the fan <clears throat> these plastic fan. Plastic fans get cracks in them and stress cracks just from heat and age. And he, I asked him, you know, if, he, if I could, you know, pick up a fan. And he says, you know what? I just don't like selling them because nine times out of ten they're cracked and I don't want them to come apart. And so he gave me a link where I could buy a brand new one. I mean, it just—he's not in it for money. He really cares about people who own Jags and really really comes through and the other people that I've really um, come to like to deal with as far as Jag parts is SNG Barrett. Originally I was going through Terry's Jag. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. They're good people to deal with. Vicky is awesome. Um, SNG is cut me a deal because I mentioned them on my website so you know, I get a little break on parts which is which is great you know every little bit helps. And they're wonderful people. Uh, <clears throat> nine times out of ten, they have what they want or what I want. So you know, and you, you can get the weird stuff like um, this fur flex right here. You can get that through them. You can get all the hoses, you, all the shims. Every every part that I purchased for that IRS rebuild that I'm still not done with and is probably the longest IRS build in history. But um, yeah, it. They've come through. I mean, I even got a brake cable. I was thinking, where the hell am I going to get the brake cable? Because the one I had was just completely trashed. So, anyway, love this car. It, it's just, it's just a wonderful place to be.